about uh, barbershop singing. Um, barbershop is a unique American art form. Um, it uh, really uh, found its way into American culture back around the turn of the century, from the 1800s to the 1900s. Um, people were not as busy. Life was a little bit less uh, stressful and less busy, and people had time to kind of hang around on street corners and at the barbershop. And guys used to gather together, and one person would start singing a melody line, and a couple other people would start harmonizing with them. And that's really how barbershop quartet singing started. Um, most, a lot of towns, especially in the South, um, had a barbershop quartet. Um, kind of if you remember the Andy Griffith show, um, there's a couple episodes on there where they had the, the Mayberry Quartet, and it was kind of like that. Um, so around the turn of the century, barbershopping was very popular. There was no published music. Um, it was just all made up chords. And um, about the 1930s, there were a couple of guys that were, were on a business trip together, and they were lamenting the fact that nobody sings barbershop anymore. With the advent of radio and vaudeville and then television, um, barbershop quartet singing was being lost, and people were not doing it anymore. And uh, you know today, people just don't sing together very much at all today. And uh, we kind of got our start um, singing in church. Uh, my wife and I would sing a, a harmony part with everybody around us singing the melody line. And we'd put one of these guys between us, and so they learned to hear the harmony very early on. And that's, that's unusual today, and it's unusual especially for have families kind of singing together. But these guys got together and they said, wouldn't it be great if we could get some people around the country interested in singing barbershop again? And that's where the Barbershop Harmony Society got its start. And it's a, really a society that um, encourages quartet singing, but there's also choruses that then sprung up around the nation. And we're part of a chorus in Lewisburg of about 30 guys uh, that get together once a week and sing and practice. And we're actually going to be having a show here in Williamsport at the uh, Clump Auditorium over at Penn College um, on May the 12th. And so if you like, to hear, like what you're hearing tonight, um, we're going to be there. Uh, the chorus will be singing, and uh, we're going to be the guest quartet. And so... We'd encourage you to get tickets and tell your friends. It's a great way to support the arts and support um, barbershop, which is a very unique American art form. And so we'd encourage you to do that. Um, this next song we're going to sing is um, it's, it's one of our favorites. And uh, boy, you know, it's, I have one of those moments. Eh? I, just, I just looked at that card just a little bit ago. The name is just, it's gone. What you just experienced is, is happening a lot more with my dad more recently. It, it, memory loss, and I got a story about that. He actually went to the doctor not too long ago, and he, said, he told the doctor he started uh, not being able to remember things as much. So the doctor said, well, just write things down, and then you won't forget it. So he said, all right, that's good, yeah, I can do that. Well, I was at home the other day. Mom and dad were in the living room, and dad got up, he was gonna go to the kitchen. And mom asked him, what are you going for? He said, well, I'm going to get a bowl of ice cream. She said, oh, that sounds good. Can you get me one? He said, sure, I'll get you a bowl of ice cream. No problem. She said, well, can you really ought to write that down? You don't want to forget that. He said, it's a bowl of ice cream. I got it. She said, well, can you add sprinkles? sprinkles. Ice cream and sprinkles. Okay, I got it. She said, can you really ought to write that down? He said, I got it. It's fine. Well, can you add whipped cream? Ice cream, sprinkles, and whipped cream, I got it. She said, Ken, you really ought to write that down so you don't forget it. He said, I got it. And he went in the kitchen. And about 20 minutes later, he came back and handed her a plate with bacon and eggs. <laughs> she was confused. She looked at him. She said, where's my toast? <laughs> That's your son here. <laughs> I don't know if I'd tell that with her in the <laughs> Hey, we, we have you gotta get there, though. <laughs> <laughs> what goes around? Joke, what goes around? Comes around. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, we, I, I mentioned, we got our start singing um, harmony in, in church, and uh, we had the uh, privilege, really, of, of singing this song at um, uh, my mother's uh, funeral service, and it's a special song for us. I, I hope you enjoy it. But I just got to tell you before we sing it. Um, this song features our wonderful, booming bass singer, my youngest son, Jeff. And so it features our bass singer. You just need to understand that before we start. <coughs> <coughs> No one 
more sorrow, there'll be no tomorrow, there'll be no more crying, there'll be no more dying, and bid farewell to my every care, no white wipe of my weeping eyes. To my every care, a wipe, wipe of my weeping eyes. I had a loving father who has gone on before. I promised him I'd meet him when they ring, ring them bells in heaven. I know. Ring them no bells when your people ring. Ding dong, ding dong bells in heaven. I know. Ding dong bells when your people ring. Tomorrow, there'll be no more crying, there'll be no more dying. When I bid farewell to my every care, and I wipe, wipe my weeping eyes. I had a loving mother who has gone on before. I promised her I'd meet her when they ring, ring the bells, and I know. Ding dong bells, way up in glory.